Welcome back to another exercise in which we're going to talk about installment notes payable. Let's read through the exercise and then see how this is different from some of the other exercises or most of the other exercises we've talked about so far. American Food Services Inc. acquired a packaging machine from Barton & Barton Corporation. Barton & Barton Corporation completed construction of the machine on January 1, 2024. In payment of the $4 million machine, American Foods issued a four-year installment note to be paid in four equal payments at the end of each year. The payments include interest at the rate of 10%. So, We have a $4 million machine. We've issued a four-year note. And the four equal installments are going to include interest at the rate of 10%. So here's what we need to do and we understand very carefully. If I just took that $4 million and divide that by four, a million dollars a year is my payment. If that's the case, Barton and Barton is not going to collect any interest from me because that is a purchase price of the asset. The $4 million is the purchase price. So there has to be interest added on to that $4 million. I'm gonna make four equal payments. So here's what we would do. We will first calculate. We first need to calculate over here, the cash payments. So I told you it's not a million dollars each. It's not 4 million divided by four. So what is that cash payment? How much I gonna, am I going to pay them? So the present value equals whatever those cash payments are multiplied by the present value factor. I'm going to pay it four times. So I'm looking at a series of cash flows or the ordinary annuity. So I look up table four. I'm gonna make four payments. So N equals four. And the interest rate they've told me is 10%. That's the interest rate that's included in this in these payments. So what I know is present value is $4 million. That's the cash price of the asset today if I had to pay it all in cash. I'm not paying the $4 million in cash. I look up table four, N equals four, I equals 10, and I come out with a factor of 3.16987. Simple arithmetic equation with three variables, one unknown, the cash payment. So rearrange the term, cash payment equals Cash payment equals 4 million divided by this factor. And that tells me how much I'm going to pay the cash. So I have an amortization table set up over here. And I know my cash payments are going to be 1,261,881 four times. The carrying value is the cash price today. The face value of that note today is $4 million. It's kind of like if I bought a house I bought a house for $300,000 and I'm going to make payments over 30 years and they tell me how much I'm going to pay. When you add all of that up, it's going to be more than the face value of the note. So let's just take a look over here. If you add up these numbers, let's do a quick add over here. I'm financing $4 million. The final price I'm going to pay when you add up the payments is $5 million. 47,526. So I'm paying a million, 40, uh, a million dollar, a million and 47,526 in interest. That's how much I'm paying. Now, interest is always calculated on the outstanding balance. So let's take a look at how we will complete the rest of this over here. But let's start with on January 1st, 2024. My journal entry is fairly straightforward equipment debit, notes payable credit and the dollar amount is $4 million. So the face value of this note, $4 million, is what I'm going to record my asset at. So depreciation is based on this $4 million, not the $5 million and whatever I'm paying in all. Okay, it's just the $4 million. That's the reason this is very important over here. Now that I have these numbers in place, let's see how much of it is interest and how much of it is the balance that I'm paying off each time. So of this amount that's paid, 
How much of it is interest? Interest is 10% of this outstanding balance. So 4 million times 10%, 400,000 of this number is interest expense, which means the difference between the two is the principal that I'm paying off. So if you had just looked at a million for each, you would have thought, oh, how much am I paying off in interest? That's not how it works over here. So my outstanding balance is still 3,138,119. It has gone down, but still it's a pretty big number over here. How does it uh, play out in my journal entry? I need these three numbers to place in my journal entry. In my journal entry, interest expense debit, note payable, that's the principal I'm repaying. To the extent I repay the principal, note payable is gonna be debited and cash credit. I know how much cash I'm paying. The cash I'm paying is what we calculated over here, 1,262,881. That's how much I'm paying over here. 1,000,000, uh, let me recalculate this number to be very sure that I have this correct. $4 million divided by 3.16987. Yep, that, that is the correct number. So just want to make a correction over here so that the number reads correctly and is consistent everywhere. Okay. What's my interest payment? The next year, 10% of this number outstanding balance is the interest. So the interest I've paid has decreased because the outstanding balance has decreased, which then means I'm paying more towards principal and the carrying value goes down further. You always hear people telling you that in the initial life of the loan, you're paying more in interest and less in principal. And that's true, obviously, because the outstanding balance is not going down. Now, I'll show you the numbers all the way through over here. And you'll see at the end, I'm left with $8. That's a rounding off uh, issue, but that's okay. We're not going to worry about that. In the exercise, they've told us, prepare the journal entry for American Food Services for the purchase of the machine. We did that journal entry, equipment debit, note payable credit. They asked us to prepare the amortization schedule. We've done that over here. They asked us for the journal entry for the first installment payment on December 31st, 2024. We did that. And then they're asking us for the last, uh, for the third installment payment, the third payment. So the third payment is over here. So the numbers for the third payment, again, interest expense debit, notes payable debit, cash credit. The cash credit is gonna stay the same, that doesn't change. How much am I paying in my interest over here? I'm paying 219.005 in interest and my note payable has decreased by 1,042,867. So once again, a relatively simple exercise. So how is this different from the ones that we had looked at before in terms of bonds? When we looked at bonds, you had the principal sum that you were not repaying, you were going to pay that at the very end. You were just making interest payments all along. What's different over here? Each time I make a payment, a part of it is towards the principal and a part of it is towards interest. Both of these are being paid over here and I'm gradually paying off. At the very end, everything is done. When you're looking at bonds payable, at the end, you still had the principal sum that you had to repay. So most, in most financing arrangements, installment payments are made. That way you don't have one large lump sum, the principal to repay at the very end. That's a very dangerous situation. So this is an example of notes pay, uh, installment notes, all your car loans, your home loans. These are all structured as installment notes. Again, starting price is the purchase price. Whatever the amount is over here, that's what the asset is gonna be debited at. For the payments, if payments are not given, we can do the calculation. I know the present value, that's the purchase price. I need to calculate payments. I need to look up table four for the discount factor. Number of payments and the interest rate that is used, that's implicit in this calculation. Interest rate is typically at the time of financing. So at this point of time, what the interest rate is. 
Subsequently, I don't care whether the interest rate goes up or down. Well, I do care if the interest rate goes down, then I'm paying a higher interest rate. For our calculations, we don't care. So this is an example of installment notes payable. 